name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. A very good morning to everyone. Nice to see you. And good morning to anyone maybe watching at home as well. On this, the second Sunday of Easter, the octave day of Easter, uh, also known as Divine Mercy Sunday. This is why I'm wearing my stole on the outside. I just don't worry, I haven't got uh, things back to front. Uh, looks a bit, maybe looks a bit strange, but yeah, so I thought I'd wear my stole that I normally wear with this vestment, um, which is a Divine Mercy stole. So um, we'll be blessing the image of Divine Mercy, which we have over there later on in the Mass, and uh, I'll be saying a little bit about, about Divine Mercy as well. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. We say together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O oh God, almighty Father, Gloria, in excelsis Deo, Gloria, Jesus Christ, the begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, Amen. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo. Let us pray. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of the people you have made your own, increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, in whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. 
through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The whole community remained faithful to the teaching of the Apostles, to the brotherhood, to the breaking of bread, and to the prayers. The many miracles and signs worked through the Apostles made a deep impression on everyone. The faithful all lived together and owned everything in common. They sold their goods and possessions and shared out the proceeds among themselves according to what each one needed. They went as a body to the temple every day, but met in their houses for the breaking of bread. They shared their food gladly and generously. They praised God and were looked up to by everyone. Day by day, the Lord added to their community those destined to be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. Let the sons of Israel say, his love has no end. Let the sons of Aaron say, his love has no end. Let those who fear the Lord say, his love has no end. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. I was thrust, thrust down and falling, but the Lord was my helper. The Lord is my strength and my song. He is my savior. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This is the work of the Lord a marvel in our eyes. This day was made by the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Blessed be God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy has given us a new birth as his sons by raising Jesus Christ from the dead so that we have a sure hope and the promise of an inheritance that can never be spoilt or soiled and never fade away because it is being kept for you in the heavens. Through your faith, God's power will guard you until the salvation which had been prepared is revealed at the end of time. This is a cause of great joy for you, even though you may for a short time have to bear being plagued by all sorts of trials, so that when Jesus Christ is revealed, your faith will have been tested and proved like gold. Only it is more precious than gold, which is corruptible even though it bears testing by fire. And then you will have praise and glory and honor. You did not see him, yet you love him. And still, without seeing him, you are already filled with a joy so glorious that it cannot be described, because you believe. And you are sure of the end to which your faith looks forward. That is the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Christians to the Paschal victim offer sacrifice and praise. The sheep are ransomed by the lamb and Christ the undefiled hath sinners to his father reconciled. Death with life contended, combat strangely ended, life's own champion slain, yet lives to reign. Tell us, Mary, say what thou did see upon the way. The tomb the living did enclose. I saw Christ's glory as he rose. The angels there attesting, 
shroud with grave clothes resting. Christ, my hope, has risen. He goes before you into Galilee. That Christ is truly risen from the dead we know. Victorious King, thy mercy show. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. In the evening of that same day, the first day of the week, the doors were closed in the, in the room where the disciples were for fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them. He said to them, Peace be with you, and showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were filled with joy <clears throat> when they saw the Lord, <clears throat> and he said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. Thomas, called the twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. When the disciples said, We have seen the Lord, he answered, Unless I see the holes that the nails made in his hands, and can put my finger into the holes they made, and unless I can put my hand in, into his side, I refuse to believe. Eight days later, the disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. The door was closed. But Jesus came in and stood among them. Peace be with you, he said. Then he spoke to Thomas. Put your, fin put your finger here, look. Here are my hands. Give me your hand. Put it, put it into my side. Doubt no longer, but believe. Thomas replied, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, you believe because you've seen me. Happy are those who have not seen and yet believe. There were many other signs that Jesus worked and the disciples saw, but they are not recorded in this book. These are recorded so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing this, you may have life through his name. The Gospel of the Lord. So this is Divine Mercy Sunday, and it was chosen by our Lord as Divine Mercy Sunday many years ago, in fact, almost 100 years ago, in 1931, he first mentioned this feast day to St. Faustina Kowalska in the Divine Mercy Revelations to her in her convent uh, in Poland, and um, which she recorded in her diary, Divine Mercy in My Soul. And... The reason why he chose this Sunday is because it's the octave day of, of Easter. It's the octave day of Easter. All this week is, we celebrate the solemnity of Easter. And the, the, the feasts of Holy Week, the events of Holy Week, which we celebrate in our liturgy, you know, the, particularly the Easter Triduum, which begins on Monday, Thursday with Mass of the Lord's Supper, the Passion of the Lord on Good Friday, the Easter Vigil, Sun, uh, Easter Sunday, Mass of the Resurrection. All these, are, these, these mysteries that we celebrate um, make present the mysteries of Holy Week, the events of Holy Week, uh, through which uh, God's mercy is uh, ultimately revealed and 
made, made concrete in Christ, in his, in his passion, death, and resurrection. So the events of Holy Week are definitive evidence of, of God's mercy, of God's merciful love for mankind. Uh, and that merciful love, we see the uh, denouement of that, the, the definitive revelation of that in Jesus' suffering on the cross. Jesus' suffering on the cross in his uh, giving of himself, his sacrificial love uh, for the salvation of, of mankind, for, for the forgiveness of our sins and everybody else's. So, and this, this um, then, this mercy, divine mercy, is celebrated in our liturgy today. We see it in the, in the first reading. Uh, the, 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 so the theme of mercy runs through the liturgy this Sunday. In the collect, we read, the, our open, the, the opening words of today's collect are, God of everlasting mercy. In the first reading, uh, the post-resurrection community in Jerusalem um, sh showed, lo showed love to one another, practiced uh, practice mercy, divine mercy, in their love for one another. Mother. They sold their possessions and shared them, them uh, among, evenly uh, in, common, in common. And we were also told they shared their food gladly and generously, uh, particularly, I imagine, with those who, who were needy. So God's mercy was evident in the way they lived their life. In, the, in today's psalm, we see God's mercy um, celebrated, um, praised. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his love has no end. God is inherently good, and his mercy, his merciful love has no end, is eternal. Uh, and we, we praise that, we venerate that in today's psalm. Let the sons of Israel say, his love has no end. Another translation of that is mercy, his mercy has no end. In, uh, in, 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 the, second re in the second reading from the first letter of St. Paul, um, we will hear these words. Blessed be God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in his great mercy, who in his great mercy has given us a new birth as his sons by raising Jesus Christ from the dead. We've, he's given us uh, a, new, a new beginning, a new a spiritual rebirth, a spiritual resurrection. If we're baptized then, we have, we have participated in Christ's resurrection. We receive that spiritual resurrection, f um, which God willing, if we persevere in the faith, will come to its fruition in eternal life. So God's mercy then is very apparent in today's readings in the liturgy, and also in, particularly in the gospel. Let's turn over here. And um, in the gospel then, the Lord's first words to the apostles when he appears to them on Easter Sunday, remember this takes place in the evening of Easter Sunday, they're, they're in the, the room where they celebrated the Last Supper, uh, the upper room. And, uh, th and, there, th and, and in that room then we've, you've got St. Peter who denied Christ three times with curses, calling down oath, oath, oaths and curses. Um, and then we have the rest of them who ran away, except for St. John. Of course, St. John was the only one who stood at the cross. So they all ran away, uh, and, they couldn't even, and the, the three of them, Peter, James, and John, couldn't even stay awake uh, in, the, in his agony in the garden to, be, to give him support. But his first words to them are, peace be with you. And, um, and, that is, and the word that he would have used, of course, would have been shalom, shalom which is not just peace, it's God's blessing, God's mercy be with you, God's love be with you. So Jesus is showing them he's forgiven them. He's forgiven them for running away, for denying him. He would have forgiven Judas if, he'd, uh, if he hadn't uh, committed suicide. He would have forgiven him if he'd been truly sorry as well uh, for his, uh, his betrayal. Um, so we see that mercy then in, in this, in this gospel, gospel story, in, in this event. And, um, and also he has given, he's, um, he's given them this, this um, mandate to, to do what he's done. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. And he want, he's commissioning them to spread his message of mercy. As he came down from heaven, the Father sent him to to proclaim the message of God's merciful love for, for, for sinners. He is, is passing on that 
authority to them and that commission to them. You've, you've, got to do, you've got to do it now. As the Father sent me, so I'm sending you. And this is your job now, from now on, is to, is to proclaim the message of God's merciful love for mankind, uh, of divine mercy. And to help them to f fulfill that, um, to bring God's mercy uh, in a very practical way, he breathes on them and says, Receive the Holy Spirit. For those whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven. For those whose sins you retain, they are retained. So he's instituting the, the sacrament of reconciliation here. He's giving them the, uh, the faculty to absolve, to absolve sin. To absolve sin. Uh, remember, this, the, the apostles were, all, were consecrated by our Lord at the Last Supper as priests. And uh, so now he's given them the, the grace, the faculty to absolve sin. And this has been handed down through the apostolic succession from these apostles, these very apostles, who received it from the Lord on the day of his resurrection. Uh, this has been handed down uh, when bishops have laid hands on, on men to, be, uh, to ordain them as priests. This has been handed down then to priests and bishops uh, throughout the ages. And so we, we have that, that very grace priests have that very grace that Jesus gave to the apostles on, on Easter Sunday to ab absolve sin, which is the sacrament of divine mercy. Uh, any sin, if a person's sorry, confess their sin in confession, will be forgiven. The Lord assures us of his merciful love, his, of his grace. So, um, and that message of mercy then, as the, the Lord said, as the Father sent me, so am I sending you. He says those very words to you and me today. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you to share the, the gospel message of, mercy, of God's merciful love with others. And they, they depend on that. So many people live in fear. If you think of the apostles, they're cowering in fear in the upper room. They, they are fearful, basically, that what happened to Jesus will happen to them that they, if they get found, uh, that's why Peter denied the Lord three times, because he could see where, that, where it was heading, and uh, he didn't want to, to end up uh, where Jesus uh, uh, was going to end up on the cross. Uh, and so they were cowering in fear. And uh, the Lord realized that and wanted to reassure them of his merciful love, his forgiveness, and said, peace be with you. People want to hear those words today, you know, peace be with you, Christ, peace be with you. They, they, so many people live in fear uh, of, all, all, of all sorts. And that fear is, doesn't help. Our society can, can, um, can massage that fear, can uh, accentuate it, can uh, make it worse, uh, that, that fear. We live in a, in a very unforgiving world, in a, in a very unforgiving world. We live in a society which permits everything, you know, the permissive society permits everything but forgives nothing. Our society forgives everything but for forgives nothing. We see that in the outrage, you, you know, that we, we see in, our, you know, in so social media uh, regarding political correctness. If you don't adhere to the, the rules, there are particular Ten Commandments of political correctness and fall foul of it, then you get hammered and there's no forgiveness, there's no, you know, they want to sack people for, for, you know, for saying the wrong thing, for a slip of the tongue. They want them sacked and uh, their, their, their reputation destroyed. Um, so we live in a very unforgiving world, but that's not the world that Christ wants, wants us to live in. He wants us to live in a very forgiving world, a very merciful world. And that's what the church offers. The church's message is not of one of condemnation, of ridicule, uh, of shame, um, and detraction, it's one of forgiveness and mercy uh, and, and, uh, and to reveal God's merciful love. That's the message that, that people need to hear today and they need to hear it from us. They're crying out for that message so they don't despair, so they're not living in fear uh, and they, are, they have hope in their hearts. And this is the message of divine mercy. <coughs> We, we need to proclaim that message uh, of God's merciful love, whether we spread the divine mercy devotion or not. This is the message of the gospel anyway. Uh, is, is the message of our faith is, is God's merciful love for, for mankind. We need to spread that. We need to share that with others to assure them if they're sorry for their sins, if they want to change, have a change of heart, if they uh, want to um, welcome Christ into their life, if they want to begin again, 
then God is ever ready to listen and, and, and to, to, to hear them and to give them his, his merciful uh, grace and blessing and, he, and healing uh, forgiveness. So let, they, they, the Lord wants us to, you know, to do that. As the Father sent me, so am I sending you, sending you, sending me to do that. And, um, and he wanted to emphasize the, the mer the God's divine mercy uh, in his revelations to St. Faustina, um, because I think uh, people could become, f perhaps there was too much of an emphasis in the past in the church on, on sin and guilt and condemnation and not enough on God's mercy and forgiveness. Uh, so uh, maybe that Christ came at that time to address that ba uh, imbalance. These messages are wonderful, they're really inspiring. I don't know whether any of you have read them, I'm sure some of you have read them, um, but they are inspiring messages. I never knew about Divine Mercy until I was about 35. I was in a prayer group in Nottingham, a rosary group, and, um, and, I, and this lady who was a member of it started talking to me after we had the end of the group, then the prayer time, we had a social time, uh, you know, tea, coffee, etc. and she started talking about Divine Mercy. And uh, I didn't, I'd never heard of it. And she explained it to me, and she gave me a leaflet. And, um, and then I think I, w uh, I actually said it with her at some point. And then there was actually, they were celebrating Divine Mercy Sunday in a church in Nottingham, down in the Meadows. Someone knows Nottingham, the Meadows area. Uh, the church there, I can't remember the name of it now, but there was, actually one of our priests was down there, um, um, and uh, he... Um, he, he, he had it celebrated in the church. We just did, the, I don't think we had the Mass in the afternoon, but we had the devotions. And uh, I, I came up and I went to it for the first time, about 95, uh, possibly 96. Uh, and um, the message really, really captivated my attention. And uh, I, I began to say the Divine Mercy regularly and, and, and even spread it a bit as well, pass on leaflets. And, uh, and, and, and I think I've celebrated Divine Mercy ever, uh, Sunday ever since. So I encourage you to, um, to, to read, if you don't know much about it, then there are some leaflets available. They're on that table at the back uh, uh, there. Uh, take one of those leaflets with you and f find out about it. Um, I can't go through all the promises the of the devotions if we take too long, but the promises are quite awesome regarding the Divine Mercy image, which we'll bless in a minute, um, and the, uh, the chapel of Divine Mercy, uh, the three o'clock prayer, um, the feast of Divine Mercy today, and, um, and also the, um, uh, well, it was the, the, the Divine Mercy devotion, um, praises, well, that's a, they're not central to the, to the Divine Mercy, uh, you know, sort of devotions. But anyway, I'll read you a little bit for um, regarding the um, regarding today this feast, and we'll leave it at that. And I'll, then I'll bless the image. So this is from Saint Faustina's diary. Let's get the right page, 52. You've got most of this in the newsletter. You've got the newsletter in, in you with you. Then it's like, it's just inside. You'll see the picture, the Divine Mercy picture inside. It's just underneath underneath it. I think that. Um, so most of this, most of this you've got, right? This is Where have I got to? Here we are. On one occasion, I heard these words: "My daughter, tell the whole world about my I uh, inconceivable mercy." Uh, so, rec as recorded in Saint Faustus' di diary, I desire that the feast of mercy be a refuge and shelter for all souls, and especially for poor sinners. On that day, the very depths of my tender mercy are open. I pour out a whole ocean of graces upon those souls who approach the fount of my mercy. The soul that, the soul that will go to confession and receive Holy Communion shall obtain complete forgiveness of sins and punishment. Now, uh, not everyone can go on the day. Uh, but if we go in, in the week before Divine Mercy, during the week, then that, that's sufficient, as long as we're in a state of grace when we receive Holy Communion. And then, very, very, very got to. On the, um, I deserve a series of, this, yes, good to. On, the, on that day, on that day are open all the divine floodgates through which graces flow, 
Let no soul fear to draw near to me, even though its sins be as scarlet. My mercy is so great that no mind, be it of, of man or of angel, will be able to fathom it throughout all eternity. The feast of mercy emerged from my very depths of tenderness. It is my desire that it be solemnly celebrated on the first Sunday after Easter. Mankind will not have peace until it turns to the fount of my mercy. Uh, I, I've got a bit more here, which I don't think you've got in the newsletter. Uh, Jesus looked at me, St. Faustina's word, Jesus looked at me and said, and this is very tragic, Soul, souls perish, souls perish in spite of my bitter passion. I'm giving them the last hope of salvation. That is the feast of my mercy. If they will, if they will not adore my mercy, they will perish for all eternity. Secretary of my mercy, write, tell souls about this great mercy of mine, because the awful day, the day of my justice, uh, is, uh, is near. And I'll just read a little bit more. I want, to, I, want to grant a complete, I want to grant a complete pardon to the souls that will go to confession and receive Holy Communion on the Feast of My Mercy. And then, um, the, uh, my, say, say, my daughter, that the Feast of My Mercy has issued forth from my very depths for the consolation of the whole world. And there, just a little bit more, just two or three sentences here. En encourage souls... Encourage, of course, our Lord's word still, encourage souls to place great trust in my fathomless mercy. Let the weak, let the weak sinful soul have no fear to approach me, for, for, even, for even if it had more sins than there are grains of sand in the world, all will be drowned in the immeasurable depths of my mercy. So, awesome messages of reassurance from Jesus uh, of his divine mercy. So, you know, let's think, seriously can think of spreading this message of divine mercy, telling others about it, uh, and um, you know, first of all, the gospel message of divine mercy, the message of our faith, of God's merciful love, and then this particular devotion, divine, divine mercy. Let's have a role in spreading that devotion. There's great promises that our Lord gives to, her, to St. Faustina to us if we, if we spread divine mercy devotion. Um, so please think about doing that. Um, I'm sure the Lord will ask us on the day when we stand before him, uh, did you tell people about my divine mercy? And did you spread the divine mercy message? You've heard about it from me in this, in this homily. You may have heard about it from me last year as well or even pre previous to that. I've, I've talked about divine mercy now since I was a priest. So that's, what, 18 years. Uh, every, every divine mercy Sunday I've talked about it and try to encourage people to say the devotions and to spread them. So please think seriously about doing that. Uh, there are several leaflets at the back. There also is a new Divine Mercy v DVD. Uh, it's a docudrama on St. Faustina and about the Divine Mercy message. It's very good. I watched it for the first time uh, a couple of weeks ago. And if you want a copy of it, uh, the, the street at the back, we've got more in this sacristy. Uh, it is £3.50, which isn't, isn't very dear, is it? Um, uh, and if you haven't got the money today, just take it anyway and just give it to me uh, when you've got it. So we're going to bless the Divine Mercy image now. Would you like to stand with us, please? Almighty and eternal God, in your goodness, Bless and sanctify this image of the divine mercy, your dearly beloved Son, which has been fashioned to reveal to us the great love of our crucified and risen Saviour, the divine mercy personified. Help us recall to our minds the streams of blood and water that had gushed forth from his pierced heart to be for us a continuous fount of mercy. Grant to all who invoke your mercy with this image before their eyes the, gr the grace of true repentance, pardon, and peace. Shield them from every danger to soul and body in this life. Jesus, our loving Savior, establish in this image the throne of your mercy. 
keep the phone from this. Pour out, pour out upon all of us who approach it with faith and trust the purifying, healing, and sanctifying rays of your grace ever emanating from it as a blazing sun. Gaze upon us as you did from the cross with your great love and mercy so that we may be filled with your grace. To the, through this image, may your divine mercy triumph over all the powers of evil. May all who venerate this image never perish. May it, be, may it be their joy in life, their hope in death, and their glory in eternity forever and ever. <coughs> this we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And then we can venerate the image if you want to do this afterwards. Jesus, I trust in you. Let's stand now to profess our faith together. Pledge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Just say so the mention of Peter and Tony in the third bidding prayer uh, as Peter and Tony King, who celebrated their 60th wedding anniversary yesterday. They live in, in Bourne. My brothers and sisters, we are a new Christian family who share in the life of the risen Lord. Let us ask God our Father for all the graces we need to live our Christian lives to the full. Pope Francis's intention for the month of April, <clears throat> for a culture of peace and non-violence. We pray for the spread of peace and non-violence by decreasing the use of weapons by states and citizens. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray on this Divine Mercy Sunday that we and all members of the Church will rededicate ourselves to living and proclaiming Christ's mercy. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Holy Father, who are called faithful, requiring and rewarding the observance of your covenant, be pleased to fill with your blessing your servants, Peter and Tony, who celebrate the 60th anniversary of their marriage at this time. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for their good health and also for their children and grandchildren and that they will all be open to receiving God's mercy. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Holy Father, who willed that the partnership of marriage should be an example of Christian living, grant that all married couples may be witnesses in the world to the mystery of your son's love. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray that the power of the resurrection will shine in our darkened world, especially in those places where war and violence reign. May the light of Christ bring hope to his suffering people. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. This Eastertide, let us renew ourselves in our faith and pray to be the best Christian disciples we can be. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Because of his infinite love for humankind, our Heavenly Father sent his beloved Son, Jesus, to save us. With great trust in his divine mercy, we present to him our own intentions. Can we also play, pray for Edwin's mother, Man Manu? who is in hospital at this time. She's, she's, she's expecting, she's had a, um, some complications. Uh, and so we pray for, for, for Manu um, that uh, 
um, her medical treatment uh, is, is a great success, and we pray for the, the, um, the safe birth of, of her baby. Lord, hear us. Lord, oh, graciously hear us. We bring these and all our prayers to Mary, Mother of our risen Lord. Hail Mary, full, full of grace, the Lord, Lord is with thee. thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Father, increase our belief in the resurrection of your Son and help us to be witnesses, help us to be its witnesses to our world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Thank you. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, <coughs> that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Gilbert and St. Guthlac, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Patrick our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. Mm -hmm. 
There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, do take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, do take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, do take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The communantiform. Bring your hand and fill the place of the nails, and do not be unbelieving, but believing. Alleluia.
act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly pre present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as being already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The body of Christ.
can just say the soul of Christ thanksgiving prayer now. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, denebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within thy wounds, hide me. Suffer me not to be separated from thee. From the malicious enemy, defend me. In the hour of my death, call me. And bid me come to thee, that with thy saints I may praise thee forever and ever. Amen. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. <coughs> Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. So, come back for, for a couple of minutes for the notices. I haven't got a newsletter up here, but I um, forgot to bring it through. Um, actually, I'll just, um, the Eucharistic ministers can come out first, uh, so they don't have to wait. <coughs> 